I know tonight that's where the Lord wants us to be. It's too bad to sing a thing full of credit cards. I'd just take them home with me. I apologize for my t-shirt tonight. I forgot my white shirt today. I got everything else when I come to the church this morning. But I, uh, I didn't think that black tie would look too good with this t-shirt, so I just left it all. Paid me out. Jeremiah chapter 7 tonight. Jeremiah chapter 7. And... I want to read one verse of Scripture tonight and share with you what God's put on our heart. The Bible said in verse 24 of Jeremiah chapter 7, But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart. Here's the message tonight. They went backward and not forward. They went backward and not forward. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you tonight for the privilege to come in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your people. We gather here tonight in the house of the Lord. We do pray, Lord, tonight that you'll just help us and strengthen us, our Father, in these days. Lord, we pray that you'll just get glory out of our lives. Pray, God, you get glory out of the message tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Jeremiah. Thank you for a man that carried a burden for his people. Lord, I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul when he said, I would, that I were a curse from Christ. What a burden he carried for Israel. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Lord, I pray tonight that you would help us not to give up on America, but Lord, to pray for our country, to stand for what's right. And Lord, we pray that you bless our men and women in uniform tonight. Those, our Father, those families, those gold star families that have given the ultimate sacrifice, our Father, for the freedoms that we enjoy this evening. Lord, I'm glad I don't have to hide my Bible. I'm glad, God, we don't have to meet in the basement or out in the woods somewhere. But truly, Lord, if something don't give in this country, it may come to that. I pray now, Father, that you'll just help us, help the people, Lord, there, and trying to reach the Chinese people, others, our Father around the world, Lord, where they do have to hide their battle, where they do have to meet in secret. Lord, I just pray tonight you'd help us to glean truth. God will give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I uh, I guess you could call the message tonight going backward, not forward. But we're living in a country tonight where there's really two schools of thought. There's a movement, and it is a movement, called the progressive movement. And as far as I'm concerned, in reading my Bible and studying my Bible, much of what's going on in that movement is not moving our country forward, but it's taking our country backwards. I, I, I'm for progress. I'm glad I didn't have to walk to Kingsport from where we live. Amen. I'm glad I could get in a vehicle and push a button and, and drive up here. Brother Wayne and I took a helicopter ride last Thursday. And uh, they didn't always have helicopters. They didn't always have airplanes. They didn't always have air-conditioned buildings, amen, to meet in and call it a church. But I'm telling you, I'm glad them slats is not pinching our butts tonight, sitting down there on the seat, say amen. 
I'm glad we've got padded pews, and I'm thankful. There is something that's real progress that you can you can understand and, and move forward. But I want you to know this: real progress will never be taken your way from the God of Heaven. It'll never be taken your way from this book. It'll never be taken your way from the principles of God's Word. So if it's called progress, and God calls it an abomination, it's really not progress, but it's going backward. And I believe that's what Jeremiah's got on his mind tonight. When he writes this verse of Scripture, they hearken not, nor inclined their ear, but they walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their own heart. You say, well, Pastor, what's the problem with that? I'm going to have to try to find it here. I'll tell you the problem with that is the heart is deceitful. Above all things, and desperately wicked. And the Word of God asks the question, who can know it? I'll answer that question. The God of heaven, He knows every heart. He knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart tonight. He said in verse 10 of chapter 17, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So, Jeremiah said they hearken not, nor inclined their ear, but they walked in the counsel and the imagination of their evil heart, and they went backward and not forward. On Sunday, you remember, in verse number 10, they said, God said, that, will you come and stand before me in this house, and, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. In essence, God is saying, is this why I delivered you? so that you could commit all these abominations. And of course, Sunday morning, that's what we preached about. Is that what the men died for? So that we as a nation could commit all these abominations in the sight of God? I believe tonight that many, many times when we think we're going forward, we're actually going backwards. Because if I line it up with this book and it don't line up with this book, I promise you, it's not going in the right direction. God does want His church to march on. I love that old song, We're Marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. Amen. I like that song, Onward, Christian Soldiers. Marching as to war. But beloved, tonight, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves in a position like Israel did, where we're not going forward, but we're going backward, getting farther and farther away from the things of God. I've been burdened for some time now, and, and I think you are too. I mean, I'm being honest tonight. It bothers me when people come to service after service after service, knowing they're lost, and leave the same way they came. I'm reminded of what an old preacher said years ago. He said, I believe the Holy Spirit of God is just slowly withdrawing Himself. Could it be? Could it be tonight that some of that is our responsibility? I don't know how many times in the last year I've had somebody say to me, I almost shouted. You know what I say to that individual? Please, dear God, get past the almost. Don't grieve the Spirit of God. Amen. If God wants you to shout, shout. Everybody don't shout. Everybody don't cry. But I tell you what, Lord, I just worship Him. I remember when my grandmother shouted, but it is. I remember as a teenage boy, that hair down on my shoulders. I remember the hair on the back of my neck standing up. 
I knew she had something that I didn't have. She had a relationship with God that was real. And so tonight, I want to preach for just a little while on this subject, going backward and not forward. Several things in the scripture tonight, just here in, in Jeremiah. And if I go back and read through Jeremiah one more time, I believe I'll have the whole book underlined. <laughs> it's a precious book. He's a precious man of God. Do you ever stop and think about meeting these people, Brother David, in heaven? You think about meeting Daniel? You think about meeting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, about meeting Ezekiel, meeting Isaiah, meeting Moses, meeting David. I'm even looking forward to meeting the Apostle Peter. Amen. You say, why? Because I'm sure he'll have something to say. <laughs> Amen. John, the beloved disciple. What a blessing. Give me some things tonight that God spoke to my heart about. Look at chapter 6 and verse number 14. Chapter 6 and verse number 14. We're going backwards and not forward. Number one tonight, when there's a false sense of peace. There's a false sense of peace. The Bible said in verse number 14, They have healed also the herd of the daughter of my people. Look at that next word, slightly. Saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. You know, right now, beloved, I believe that that's one of the things, that's one of the things where we're at, beloved. Listen, come with me to the book of Thessalonians just a moment. There's a false sense of peace. But in the book of John, Jesus said, My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I unto you. And there's, there's men that have a false sense of peace and that their peace is not found in the Lord. Look in the book of Thessalonians with me for just a moment. I'll have to find it here. I believe it's in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, I believe. The Bible said, But of the times, verse 1, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I like verse number four. But ye, brethren, I love the word bad in the Bible. It's a hinge. It tells you that on one side of that word, it's one way, and on the other side, it's another way. And you and I, as God's people, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake us as the thief. We're children of the light, children of the day. We're not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Here in the book of Jeremiah, the, the children of Israel, they thought they had peace. They're committing abomination, even in the house of God. And they thought everything was going real well. But, beloved, they're soon going to find out that there's a God in heaven that does not wink at sin. There's a God in heaven that is a God of love and mercy and grace, but He's also a holy God and a God of judgment and a God of righteousness. There's a false sense of peace. Look at chapter 8 and verse number 15 for just a moment. The Bible said we looked for peace, but no good came for a time of health and behold, trouble. Have you studied any about what's went on in the last couple of years? Beloved, I'm telling you, we as a nation have been deceived. There's a bunch of deceivers in high places, amen. And I wonder sometimes if we're not just being set up for the next round. 
They're not just saying what we'll swallow before we push back. Going backward, we're not going forward when there's a false sense of peace. I want to say this tonight, and I mean this. I thank God that what I have in my heart is real. I'm going to leave here one of these days. I don't know when. I don't know where I'll be. But I know where I'm going. I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know I'm going to meet Him. And I praise God for a peace that's real. We're going backwards and not forwards. Number one, when there's a false sense of peace. Number two, when we're going away from God's Word. Look at chapter 6 with me, please, in verse number 19. The Bible said, Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words. Not only now, listen, not only did Israel not hearken to the Word of God, in other words, they wouldn't listen, but the Word of God goes on further and says, Not to my law, but they rejected it. Beloved, I want you to see the parallels between our country and the nation of Israel. It's amazing to me how that somebody in the Congress or somebody in the Senate, somebody can pass away and they'll get out of Bible and they'll read a verse of Scripture. You know, I, I, I wouldn't mind that at all if they just read them at other times and hearken to them at other times and not reject them at other times. Because when the Scripture is rejected, when they no longer believe male and female created he them. I told Maggie today over in the hallway, I said, boy, I missed it Sunday morning, Maggie. I was going to Kingsport on, uh, I was going to Kingsport to, for the memorial service on Monday. And uh, I got to thinking, going down the highway, you know, I was talking about if those two male monkeys got on the ark, there wouldn't have been any more monkeys. You remember that? And I, I, I said to Maggie, if there had been two roosters got on the ark, there wouldn't have been no Chick-fil-A. Amen. Wouldn't have been no eggs for breakfast. If there had been two bulls got on the ark, beloved, there wouldn't be no steakhouse in Kingsport. There wouldn't be no hamburger joints in Kingsport. Going away from God's Word. Look at chapter 7 and verse number 28. The Bible said here, But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. You know what I believe? You know what? I believe this with all of my heart. I believe they thought they were rejecting Jeremiah. Can I tell you something, beloved? If it's God's man preaching God's book and it's being rejected, it's God's Word and God Himself that's being rejected. Amen? And they might have thought, they, well, we don't like this guy, Jeremiah, but this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction, truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. What happens when truth perishes in a city? You fill it up with tents and needles. And people are used in the bathroom on the street. What happens when, when truth perishes in a, in a country? Why, you just break in and you just take whatever you want to. There was two employees the other day, I saw this in the news, that run a bunch out of the store and they got fired for running them out. That's sick, beloved. Amen. Uh, they're going away from God's Word. When we go away from God's Word, it says, Thou shalt not steal. It didn't say steal until you get $950 in the cart and then quit. It said, Thou shalt not steal. We're going backward and not forward when we're going away from God's Word. Go back to chapter 6. Look at verse 23 with me for just a moment. And 24. The Bible said, They shall lay hold on the bow and spear 
They're cruel. They have no mercy. Their voice uh, uh, roareth like the sea. They ride upon horses to set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish uh, hath taken hold of us and pain as of a woman in travail. When we go away from God's Word, beloved, it causes a great deal of pain in a nation. It causes pain in a home. It causes pain. We're going backward and not forward when there's a false sense of peace. When we're going away from God's Word. We're going backward and not forward when there's a disregard for God's man. Look at chapter 6 with me, please, for just a moment. In verse number 27. In chapter number 6, in verse number 27, this is what God said. He said to Isaiah, or excuse me, to Jeremiah, I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people that thou mayest know and try their way. Look at chapter 7, verse number 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at the gates to worship the Lord. And saith, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Look at chapter 9, verse 1 through verse number 3. We're talking about God's man here. He said, Jeremiah said, Oh, that my head were waters, that mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had a, in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Look at verse 3. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Beloved, the people is going backward and not forward when there's a disregard for God's man. Let me tell you why. Some of this has come about. Look at chapter 10 and verse number 21. The Bible said, For the pastors are become brutish they have, they, and have not sought the Lord. I heard this just the other day, and I'm not going to name any names, but I, a very, very good source. A pastor told somebody that he didn't need certain... Uh, ah, books and things of that nature. I'll just leave it like that. He said, I get my sermons off the internet. I'm going to tell you something right now, beloved. I'd hate to call myself a man of God if I couldn't take this book and open it and pray and the Spirit of God speak to my heart and give me something to preach to God's people. Brother Junior, that would feed them. I'm doing this because Brother Junior told me one time, people standing around after church, he said, they'll gather where the corn's been scattered. The pastors have become brutish. They've not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Hey, Pastor, why did you read that verse? Let me tell you what I told a teenager. I hadn't been at this church long. And a pastor had done something that hurt him. And I looked at that teenager and I said, Son, I'll tell you right now. Listen to me. I said, If you won't put me in the barrel with all the pastors, I won't put you in the barrel with all the teenagers. Somebody say amen. But I'm just telling you, beloved, there's a lot of people out there that have met this kind of pastor that Jeremiah spoke about right here. Look at chapter 12 and verse number 11. The Bible said they have... Or excuse me, I'm, I'm going to read verse number 10. 
as well. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate. Being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate because no man layeth it to heart. Let me tell you what I heard years ago, and I really like this. Here's the man preaching to a bunch of preachers. He got up and he said this. This is what he said. He said, the reason so many of you guys got so much to get off your chest on Sunday morning, he said, you don't have enough on your heart. Anybody hear what I just said? Honey, there's a difference in delivering a message that's in your heart and getting something off your chest. Getting something off your chest is flesh. We've all heard it. We've all seen it. It's revolting. We're going backwards and not forwards when there's a false sense of peace, when we're going away from God's Word, when there's a disregard for the man of God. Turn with me to chapter 20. Ain't no way I'm going to get done tonight. That's okay, I reckon. You reckon this will hold till Wednesday night after Bible school? I doubt it. More like Sunday night in the fellowship hall. Going backward and not forward. Look at chapter 20. I'll quit right here tonight. Here's the man of God. Here's Jeremiah. He said, O oh Lord, Thou hast deceived me. We, we don't have to read any further to know. Brother Jason, you ever say to God, He's deceived you? If I ever say that to the Lord, we're in bad shape. We're in bad shape. We're at a pretty low ebb, Brother Eddie, if we ever look up to our Heavenly Father and say, God, you've deceived me. I'm just trying to get you to see the heart of the man of God. He said, Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. What's going on? He said, everyone mocketh me. I hope you never experience it, Brother Jason. But I've stood in a pulpit like this and watched somebody mock me while I was preaching the Word of God. You can say whatever you want to. I don't care who's doing it. It hurts. It hurts deep. And I'm going to tell you something right now, beloved. There's a fear in my heart. There's somebody that will mock God's Word. And it's being preached by God's man. Watch this now. He said here, I'm in derision. Everyone mocketh me. If I'm reading this correctly, and I, if you read through the book of Jeremiah, it looks to me like Jeremiah, excuse my English, but he ain't got a friend in this world. But he's got a friend on the other side. Let's take it closer than a brother. Watch this now. He said, For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. How bad a shape did he get in, preacher? Look at verse 9. Then I said, I'll not make mention of him. Let me give you that in East Tennessee vernacular. Jeremiah said, I'm done. I'm going to house. I've had enough. A faithful man of God. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. There's that word again, brother. But. Y'all see it? But. His word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Jeremiah had something down on the inside of him that kept him going. Amen. 
when people were mocking him, when there was nothing around him to encourage him. You remember a scripture where the Word of God said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm going to tell you something right now, beloved. We better hide this old book in our heart. There can come a day, bro, beloved, listen, uh, I remember uh, Brother Chris talking Sunday morning in Sunday school about Ree laying back there when she had that COVID. And she said when she was laying back there and couldn't have a Bible, nobody to read the Bible to her. She said, I laid back there and I, that ICU, she just about died. But the thought went through her mind, I wish I would have memorized more of the Word of God. I like that. This man of God is a blessing. He said, I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. That almost like, sounds like the news, don't it? All my familiars watched for my halting. <laughs> they said, he's going to quit. He'll never make it. There's a pastor in Kingsport when I came here said I wouldn't make it a year. You say, what's your problem, preacher? Well, every once in a while I just want to say, man, and nah, nah, nah. I'm going to tell you what, buddy. Men don't know everything. He said, I heard the defaming of many. All my familiars Watch for my halting, saying, Peradventure, he'll be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. Brother Jason, you hanging on? The next verse, the next word is, But the Lord is with me. That's a mighty terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, they shall not prevail, they shall be greatly ashamed. For they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Well, I'm not done, but I'm quitting. I want to ask you this. In your home, do you want to go forward or backward? We want to go forward, we've got to go to this book, don't we? Amen. In our church, we want to go forward. We don't want to go backward. Thank God for Jeremiah. He's a precious, precious prophet of God. Amen. I appreciate him so very much. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for the word of the living God. Thank you, Lord, tonight for the peace. Lord, the world might be rocking and reeling. They're saying up is down and down is up. They're saying good is evil and evil is good. But Lord, it really don't matter what they say. What we're going to concentrate on is what you said. Because Lord, the word of the Lord will stand forever. It is truly forever settled in heaven. Would you help us tonight, our Father, as a people? Spend more time in your word. God, would you help me to be more sensitive to your word? May the Spirit of God teach me this book that I might have the privilege to teach it to others. Father, I do pray tonight now that you have your will, have your way in our lives. Thank you, God, for my people. Lord, I'm not sure they know how precious they are to me. But truly, Lord, they are. I pray, Lord, for this young man next door. I know, Lord, tonight they've heard a good lesson from the Word of God. I know the young man will be loved on tonight. I just pray the Holy Spirit of God would do His office work. Speak to that heart. Thank you for speaking to my heart, Lord. Way back yonder in 1987, I 
sure I wouldn't be here today, Lord, had you not done that for me. Let your people win in Jesus' name. We'll take about a minute break, call the church to order. We're going to vote.